Hey, it's me, Size 7 Welcome to part 12 of my Library of Runa walkthrough. Let's waste no time into seeing the aftermath of Love Town. Hello there, passengers in first class seats. So we're back on Warp Chain following Jae Hyun. Takes twice the, month, twice the monthly wage of an average person in the nest to a 40 seat in this carriage, I hear. That means someone in the back streets would have to work hard for at least a year for it. I've always had some pressing questions about warp trains. For example, what is the point of first class seats when the trip supposedly only lasts 10 seconds? I guess it's worth the expense, after all. You can sleep without a care in the world. All the while, the passengers in the carriages behind us are defenseless against the maddening tide of time, trying to overcome it through the pain of tearing their own flesh or the comfort of conjoining with one another. What's weird is, they kind of set that up though, they're the ones that kept nudging everyone into that direction. I've always wondered what kind of outstanding technologies singularities could be to transport people to any platform in only 10 seconds, no matter how far it is. Now I get the gist of it after seeing how this train's been going for about 2,000 years. Me? How am I staying sane, you ask? Well, it's all thanks to my fellow members of the ensemble that Hothead Elena and I have actually been here for only a week or so. Pluto says our consciousness can be preserved in stasis and unfrozen only when needed or whatever. Have we seen Pluto? He is the skeleton guy that showed up with the blue reverberation. Says it's magic and all, and well, I've got no choice but to trust him. He's my co worker now, all things considered. In any case, I pity the fools taking this train. Dozens of years of pain and suffering, and it's all long gone from their memories when they arrive. They return to their ordinary lives like nothing ever happened after a status restoration procedure. Isn't that right? Wow, warp trains are awesome. It's kind of expensive, but I can get anywhere in such a short time. It's a wonderful world. We can go everywhere in the blink of an eye. Uttering such remarks, they'll blend back into the city life, completely forgetting about the hellscape that took place on this train. The memories of trying to slaughter their own friends and families as all bonds were blurred over time, having lost themselves a long ago. And all of that is conveniently erased from their heads. It's astonishing how singularities are so uniformly, uniformly appalling. And yet you rich folks are scared of even that, so you doze off in your safe space for those thousands of years. You must have heard a word of advice from some acquaintance of yours, hmm? You'd be much better off taking first class seats. Or some of you are already aware of the truth behind warp trains, perhaps. That'd be ironic in its own right. You decide to take this train and knowing what would happen. Ah, in case a certain foolhardy individual or two... Hey! are still believing that this train is broken or malfunctional? It's not defective. This train is operating as intended. You get that by now, don't you? Strolling around in a completely different time-space axis for some thousand years, and when it comes back to reality? Ta-da! It's ten seconds later. Taking long roundabouts through time, reduced to 10 seconds in real life. Sounds like a perfect ride for people who are in a hurry, doesn't it? What is your real life though? The one you were living for some few decades, or the one you've been trapped in for thousands of years? Dang, that's a good question. If you lost your memories and returned to your ordinary life, would it be a blessing or a curse? Well, in this case, with what happened on this train, it would be a blessing. Who cares, really? Moving on, my biggest question was this. 
This box with T Corp's logo on it, so shamelessly and ridiculously and nonchalantly on board. Wondering what this thing was doing plugged into the train. I could roughly guess why after a bit of thinking. What are you doing? Quietly muttering lectures to yourself. Your course with words as usual? Speaking to the couple of voyeurs who are probably watching us as we speak, of course. Alright, that was the plan. Being stuck in this train for a, re for a week really did take a toll on my focus. Your acting was excellent. Were you an aspiring actress in the past? Maybe. Anyway, just carry on with what you're doing. How cold. It seems this disguise Pluto gave me has almost expired now. Shall we get started, wealthy fellows? It looks pretty cool. I have no hard feelings for the somewhat average commoners back there. You lot make me upset, if I'm being honest. The way you try to scrum your way into comfort with money like the maggots you are agitates me beyond reason. Life sure is bizarre, isn't it? You spend your hard-earned cash for a first-class ticket to keep yourself safe and sound from the torture of time, but now you're about to suffer something entirely else. Unfortunately, run into the likes of us and meet a terrible fate just because you've taken first class seats. Yeah, right. Who knows? One of you might have been a piss poor sod who just so happened to win a ticket. Hmm. So it makes choices so mysterious and profound. Personally, I think there's no such thing as choice in our lives. Someone is playing tricks on all of us, mischievously and sneakily. Staging an endless puppet show, attaching invisible strings to us. Now, shall we get started? It's time for a little puppetry. So that's the puppeteer, huh? It's as if he were speaking directly to us. He's part of the Blue Reverbs gang. Maybe he knows something about us. Could the Blue Reverberation be focusing on the library then? Possibly. I don't know what he's looking for, but it certainly ain't gonna be normal. What else could it be after, other than the books we have? The question would be what kind of books they really want. Anyway, Warp Corp is going to be in big trouble if the disappearance of every passenger in the first class carriage gets known by others. For sure, maybe a corp might be involved with us at this rate. Is this part of the Blue Reverb's plan? It'd be intriguing if that were the case. I bet your enthusiasm will turn into disdain real quick when you actually meet that... Cuckoo? Guests who cannot speak. Still, you managed to come to the library through the invitation. That means you must have some sort of consciousness now. Even though you're puppets controlled by the strings above you. No idea what you may be saying. If you want to get the books as your puppeteer so wishes, you can go through that door. Oh boy. So this is a fight. So we've got three acts. With a whole bunch of damage. Blunt dice power plus one. So these cards are really painful. Uh, I think... Yeah, I 
I think I can do this. This is going to be a little rough though. And here's the intro to counter dice. So they're yellow. Uh, they can be re-rolled if they win. And they're basically... Get me out of that. They're basically a counter to one-sided attacks. But none of these guys have them. That's going to be for the next part. So we're going to want to nuke at least one of these right off the bat. I'm going to choose this back one. Alright, that's one down. Yeah, if you can, you really want to avoid taking this hit. That's going to be a 6 to 9. So, taking card like Transpierce and getting really lucky, honestly, with my uh, high speed dice rolls. Probably going to save me here. They're playing a ton of those this turn. <laughs> They're all playing it. I kind of stunt some of the damage with this. And by clashing with the people I have protect, I can also reduce the amount of damage I take overall. I messed up my clash order there. Whoops. We've got two down. They're all playing those cards again. And this one has strength and endurance from its emotion pages. That's pretty rough. I mean, I really don't want to take this clash. He's so close to being staggered. I'm going to spread the damage here. I actually don't want to play that. Okay, I think this might be my best shot.
Yeah, they're doing so much stagger damage. This is wild. I do have two enduring, so I might be able to gain it back. I get pretty lucky here. What I can actually do is I can guarantee that Sunset Blade hits first by setting up my clashes like that. I can do the same thing here, so I can guarantee or, oh no, I can't. Actually, I still could. I just switch it up like this. Okay, I don't think that's gonna kill, actually. What I'll do is I'll use Sharpen Blade here instead and clean up here. There's that stagger, and now we don't have to worry about those cards being played. Hey, and another stagger. Good stuff. Now we got more. This time we have Nimble Puppets. So we got this card, Automated Movement. Which is pretty annoying. You see it has Evade Counter Dice. Counter Dice can be any other dice type and they basically gain that effect. But they can continually be re-rolled if they keep winning clashes. It also has Acceleration which is even more stagger damage, so. This is gonna be rough. Oh man, I didn't get any- I didn't draw any ink overs to start. That's really bad. And I don't have anyone that can redirect that. I don't even think I should try. I don't even think I should try to clash with that. I'm just gonna have to eat all that damage. Just so bad. I think just dishing out as much damage as I can is going to be my best shot. Got really lucky with that dice. Yeah, look at that. Actually pretty lucky that I'm using so many slash dice because they're weak to that. I can't believe Taylor tailoring just roll just rolled two sixes. 
Pillow rolled really hard there. Alright, I've got my strength for this turn. That's why it's good to have at least one tank in your team. As you can see, Hod's not taking like any damage because of the block dice. And then just constantly having protect on her. Then probably my saving grace for this fight, honestly. If I play this smart, I should be able to get staggers here without actually having to clash with anyone. Not good. Yeah, so she's being targeted, so I have to stop that. Pretty much take all the clashes with Hod here. So this should kill. I actually guarantee that it kills by doing this. I really don't like. I have to take a clash with her, even though she's so low. So unlucky. So 
So we're in a pretty bad spot right now. Because now we've got this big behemoth. Good deal. You thought the other guys did a whole bunch of stagger damage? This guy's something else. And this card repre repressed, repressed flesh. Blech, I can't even talk. It is really hard to clash with. Obviously, I lost the character on the last act, so... So she's dead for this. And yeah, Forceful Gesture is also pretty impossible to clash with, too. But I think my best bet is actually to get the lead on him. Because I'm probably just flat out going to lose here, which is fine, because we still have two other fours that can attempt to pick up the slack, essentially. Actually, I want to make sure if I can get more clashes on her, that's better, because I can get five protect this scene. May giving protect out next scene as well. So let's see its resistances. Yeah, it's got a good resistance too. I guess another thing I could do here is just try and kill some of these other ones. Honestly, is probably going to make my life easier in the future. Go ahead and get bleed. And also the damage you do in these fights does carry over if you bring in another floor afterwards. should say that stagger resist it does reset okay this could be good I was gonna say if I can get any evade dice might be able to save this but nope is playing repressed flesh. I might be able to stagger him though. Oh, this is bad. I'm just gonna have to put damage on him and then probably go down. I don't think this wins against that. She's not getting attacked. Okay, I don't like that. Just gonna go for damage, and since he has a higher speed die, those will both connect. Yeah, I can do this.
Okay, we got the really annoying one out of the way. Well, they're going for it. Let's see, will this kill? That might kill. I can stop that and probably get a stagger if I get really lucky with the roll. Hey, nice. That's so nice. Yeah, what we're about to see is a pretty crazy difficulty spike in the game overall. If this is any judge of it, because we just, this is our first fight in Urban Nightmare, and a lot of the fights are kind of like this. So low. I can't redirect this. Just have to go for it. Oh, I can't even play anything. That's rough. I actually won it. I totally thought he was gonna die. Counter dice here is really bad for me. I think I can kind of cheese this. I might be able to stagger him if I do this right. So I'll have to beat the three to eight. I think that might be worth it. If not, this should stagger. Hey, that one's dead. Oh my gosh, he got to one. All right, I did it with one floor. Reception of puppets down. Looks like we got some strings to attach. I don't know what that is. Pretty cool stacks, and look at all of these books. So in young. Those puppets were conscious somehow, right? 
They appeared so, we could resolve books from them too. Although they didn't have control over their bodies, they still seemed to carry minds of their own. They had to witness their own bodies being tugged along by strings while their senses and feelings were intact. Does that mean... Yes, the puppeteer is a distortion. Those puppets were its byproducts. I've seen several abnormalities that could create underlings for themselves, so I can understand this to be a similar case. Poor folks, working their asses off only to be treated like dolls. I can understand their feelings well. After all, I used to be a puppet myself. Can those puppets be freed though? Killing the puppeteer may free them from the attached strings, but they would remain ragged dolls. I must wonder if they'd still want to live in that form. Yeah, fair enough. It couldn't be that simple. What's good is that now I get to utilize all those super annoying cards. Yes, and I got a puppet page. Hell yeah. Yeah, I'm excited. Puppet page one. Life in the nest isn't anything special, honestly. It's the same the whole world over. You get pecked by your boss and go through mounds of workload. You find yourself working overtime pretty much every day. Pay hey, isn't all that exciting either. When you realize that you barely get any money for yourself after paying for maintenance, credit cards, insurance, living expenses, and all that. Most of your income's gone in a flash. And then, back to work. I have my ways of enjoying the little things in life, though. When I come back home from work, I crack open a cold one. And watch the back streets through the window as night falls. Well, there's this problem, it's not a cold one with the boys. When I'm lucky, I can see people chasing each other or getting into a tussle, and I think, oh, I sure hope that person manages to get away. <laughs> what a psycho. I'm just being a hypocrite, of course. We're all simply watching it for fun, don't you agree? It's like a TV show. Viewers aren't genuinely concerned for the people on the rectangular screen. All they care about is guessing who will win. So many unrealistic and varied situations take place in the streets, and it actually feels as if I'm watching television. Don't call me out for being inhumane. Who knows, maybe someone is watching me work myself to the bones from a high-rise, holding a glass of wine in their hand. I mean, that just kind of seems like trying to justify it, right? Puppet page two. Money rules the city. Every denizen of the city is obsessed with money to the point of popularizing the belief that money can be thrown almost any problem to be thrown at. While the earnings of an average nest resident are significantly higher than those of a person inhabiting the back, street, back streets, there's also a notable wage gap among the nest habitants. One thing to keep in mind is that your position in your job doesn't always guarantee a high income. No matter how high your rank is in a small enterprise, you might not earn much more than a fixer in the section 6 of an association, which we know is the lowest rank in an association. Even if your financial gain is on the higher side, you likely won't earn enough to waste extravagantly meaning you won't get to take first class seats on warp trains all the time or load the table with a sumptuous feast. However, it will be enough money to secure a stable life in the nest. People who earn 4 million on or more, or more per, per month can be considered the upper middle class. That's where the quality of life sees a visible increase. You no longer have to worry about being evicted from the nest for being unable to pay taxes and you can hire fixers to keep you safe. You can save up in case of emergencies or send your children to better schools. A life lived in safe haven free of illness and starvation. Well, that's the life of an upper middle class they all talk about. What is there to be considered special? We just earn a bit more than others and live in a bit more comfort than others. That's brutal. A 
can only have one of those? I don't remember that. So I'm mainly looking for blunt dice here. Oh, these cards are really good for restoring light. So I usually like to keep at least one zero cost and a one cost as well. And obviously there's this card again. If you're willing to risk taking damage, this is really good. I do you like doing this? Although I should only run one of them, so I don't go too overboard with doing a ton of damage to myself. Okay, so that should be good. And obviously, since it's a a blunt setup, uh, it synergizes really well with Yasad's floor, with like this card specifically. Let's see, who do we want to fight next? Over here. Bunch of numbers that don't mean anything. I'll just let the sound effects play for this. I knew it. It's pretty much impossible to understand the language of sweepers without an interpreter to translate them for you. Wait, I can promptly translate their speech as long as it has the form of a language. What? Seriously? You can make sense out of those few sentences and decode a whole language from them? I'm that capable. I really like the their voices here. It's becoming clear that the night is no longer ours alone. I know. I know that we have fewer and fewer places to properly dine at with our families. It's clear that the families who dine at the nest of El Corp are recently having a hard time seeing what is in front of them because of the mist covering the area. I hear that some families even get lost in the fog and fail to leave. Why are we not letting Mother know? If mother knows if she will wage an all out war against the Index. We're not certain enough to risk losing our families to battle. It is true that the Index truly has betrayed us, and if Mother is too late to realize their treachery, many of our families will starve. It will slowly die out. Less food means mother will have difficulty fostering new family members. We all have our own homes, our own families, and our own children. I'm not advocating neglect, I'm simply saying that we need to practice caution. There's the carnival. You know that has only been a week since this despicable filth known as the carnival raided the dens of our brothers and ate our families. Five days ago, Lahir Delu invaded my younger sibling's den and brutally killed two families. Three days ago, a proxy of the Index laid waste on our neighbors. Two days ago, Puppeteer took my children, and yes, I know, I know that those incidents all happened at night. I know that our presence is not as powerful as before. I know that we have lost our dominance over the night time of this nest. Others should be aware as well. We know that we need more space to use as our den. 
Then why? We will only lose more of our dens if we get involved in bigger conflicts. If we're to engage in a full-fledged battle against the Index, we'll have even less time in our hands. Let's make it through, on our own. We'll be, what will we possibly do? Oh, what will we possibly do? It is the library. We must go to the library. I know that the library has the books of those who worked for the thumb and the index. Have you received its invitation? I have. With this, we can confirm if the index truly has turned its back on mother and our families. Moreover, this will help us relieve the hardships of our families dining at Nest L. We are not too late by then, that is. I understand what you mean, uncle. Let's call our neighbors. Let us head to the library together. Let us tell our children to lock the doors and not let strangers in before we leave. Let us as parents protect our mother, our neighbors, our family, and our children with our own hands. Whoa, are we really getting sweepers as guests here? They have the capacity to collectively go somewhere with a clear purpose at a time that isn't night and talk so fluently? That's funny. I expected them to be a little coarser. Once got an interpreter to try to talk to him before, I thought they could only speak in jumbled words back then. Oh boy oh boy, look at them using complete sentences. And they're so talkative with each other too. That means the interpreter I paid an arm and a leg for was a total scam and a ripoff. Are sweepers all composed of family members? It's probably just a symbolic term if they chose to forge bonds between each other. I doubt they're actually families by blood. It's metaphorical, like the titles most other syndicate to use. I heard they kidnapped children from the outskirts and the back streets. I don't really suggest looking too deep into sweepers. They're all over the back streets and the outskirts, and I don't think they have much to do with the freedom you're looking for anyway. Dear neighbors, this is the library. This is a place the scum of the back streets have been rattling on about. We did not expect to come to the library ourselves. Greetings, dear guests. Greetings. Are you our family? There's no way I am now, is there? However, you speak in the language of our family. We can speak with other members of our family. We try to talk to the guests on their level these days, as you can see. I'm impressed. This is surprising. Behold, neighbors. Larbury is not like any other place. I know, this is the first time we're having a real conversation with someone who's not our family. Family, 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 family. Could you stop with that horrid rubbish? Family is important. It is not horrid. We apologize. We're simply here to take the books we desire. And in regards to the mist covering this nest, you know anything about it? Find out when you read the books, no? It is true. All we want is to acquire the books we want to find. We will be satisfied. Fine. May you find your books in this place. Okay. So this is a, another pretty long fight. I have another three acts. And... These guys have a kind of annoying gimmick to them with this persistence page. Upon taking little damage, 8% chance to revive with some HP. This chance is halved each time the character revives. And each of them gets that. So you either have to kill them before they play this card, or you have to kind of unga them really hard. It's 
not too bad to clash with. It's actually a four to seven and a three to seven. Trash disposal can be kind of obnoxious. I'm kind of tempted to use Gassad's floor for this. I just think I can make more, I can do more damage and get it more staggers off with his floor. I'm actually, oh, that's not on it. Especially with this puppet page, it's just, it's just so good. Ideally I'd use a second one, but. Okay, let's see how this goes. Our work is to sweep. All is for mother and her family. I see less things to sweep than in the streets. I see less things... Oh yeah. And they're all playing it. So sometimes that happens. Luckily this isn't a very difficult card to clash against. But it does mean that... Kind of trying to... Unga, one of them at the start is a little harder. And so this counter dice, you'll see this get played. dice do see how I won that first clash and then it re-rolled so counter dice are pretty good I just want to see if I can stagger this guy what are they weak to okay they're weak to pierce so I might be able to stagger this one And then I guess I'll put damage on him. If he does revive, then the burn should still be there. All right, good stagger. Really good damage, and the trash disposal didn't re-roll. As you can see, he revived, but he still has a ton of burn, so he'll die. Here's metallic ringing. Put that to the side. We can still sweep them. It is okay. We still have some more fuel. It is okay. Yeah. go ahead and try and take out another one. I can probably just flat out put enough damage on him that I'll get a kill. We're just going to do one to try and guarantee the kill. Hey. 
that's why we didn't activate because it has an 80% chance to do it. We got lucky and hit the 40% chance of it. So now this turn it's actually really important that I stagger both of these ones since they're lower. Because the persistent effect will run out next turn. Which means that I can kill them while they're staggered. So we're doing that to make sure that ink over gets a one-sided before they even clash. Yep, and there's both of them staggered. Hopefully I didn't put too much damage. Oh, so that's what happens when Trash Disposal re-rolls. I hope I'm not actually... Okay. For a second I thought I was going to rock the effect there. Oh, I did on this one because of the burn. Okay, so he immediately is just playing this card again. So that will kill. That should be more than enough to kill. But just in case, I'll put one cleanup on him. Now I can just ungood this one. I didn't kill that one. It lived with one HP. Okay, this should kill. And now we do it again. And we got unlucky, they're all playing it again. Sometimes they don't, and that means you can focus them and just kill them off right away.
That was a cool effect. That's something new. I got lucky again. It's only a 20% chance that happens. I almost don't even want to hit these two. Okay, I think I'm going to save them. We'll just put damage on these ones to get them low. And then hopefully kill them all next scene. Okay, so I think I messed that up a bit. I mean, these two are set up, so... So that'll kill... I kind of like this. Why not, right? Now both of these guys are set up. I think I accidentally propped the effect on him though. Look at how high those are rolling. Okay, hopefully that's enough to kill before his ability activates. Oh yeah, that was more than enough. And now the final act. But this time we have the special ones. Anton, Lila, and Valerie. But they're not much different. Uh, their big thing is this corpse cleanup. 
So when anyone dies, they recover 20% HP. And then they have Mind Hauler and Health Hauler on different ones, so they can recover Stagger, Resist, or Health. And then this is their other card they can inflict Paralysis with. Which can be kind of annoying. And then they can give protection to each other. And Valerie doesn't have anything cool. For the sake of our children, we must acquire the objects called books from this place. There appears to be another side to the to this luxur luxurious place. It is reassuring to be with our families and neighbors. So basically a strategy for... Oh man, she's not playing it, but I want to get her book. So normally I would say just put everything into whatever sweeper doesn't play the persistence card. But because this is a special character, so we kind of have to farm. But that we have to like farm emotion for, it's not really worth just killing them outright. And then having to go through this entire reception again. Which we'll probably end up doing anyways, just off screen. Got a lot of trash disposals coming at us. I can probably stagger him before anything even touches me though. I can do that by doing this. Now Lila's still not playing her persistence card. I know she has it. Might just go for the stagger just to stop any other damage from coming through. So we've got the mobs down, now we just want to flash to gain motion coins for them so I can get a ton of books.
Now she's playing it. Jeez. So Valerie hit three. She's gonna die in two turns. I can get the stagger off here, but I don't wanna kill. She needs like three clashes. Got her motion level in Anton's. Okay. Now I can kill. So we can guarantee three books. That shows some of the longest fights to go through for this, huh? Boy, was that exhausting. You're telling me, Roland. Those sweepers sure are persistent. What kind of deal could have made them so desperate, I wonder? Most I can tell is that the sweepers are losing their ground, so they tried to make a deal to do something about it. Do we get to know more? No idea. Maybe the invitation will show us the answer eventually. It seems to be weirdly fixed on the sweepers, by the way. What's up with that? Something about them smelled suspicious. They do have an awful smell, I'll give you that. Take a sniff of those filthy bandages and your appetites. Are you insane? Sheesh, can't even crack a joke. Well, anyway, this is the first time our Miss Library Director let her intuition speak so much. I guess I want her to keep an eye on this case. Nice, we got all the books. The Sweeper's Page. If the night in the back streets were to be gone, the back streets will fall into even worse chaos than before. In other words, the night in the back streets is the rain that keeps this place in check because the night exists, people here show the least amount of human decency. Here's an example. You come home at the end of a hellish day, dragging your weary body to the sofa, you hope to get a small break lying on the couch and watching cheap entertainment shows. But guess what happens? Some crazy jerk upstairs turns up their speakerphone's volume to the max and makes obnoxious noises that make your ceiling shake. Too bad, there goes your peaceful respite. You can't stand the noise that's getting to your head, so you decide to ask your neighbor to please be considerate and lower the volume. 
You want to talk this over without a fight, so you battle the furious urge a million times before you go upstairs. But then our unfriendly neighbor gives you a baffling reply when you confront them. I need some free time for myself too. I have groups with my neighbors that I just live with, so you should do the same. I make a huge fuss about the noise when it isn't even too loud, blah blah, talking out of their ass. What can you do though? Barely keeping your boiling anger inside, you go back down to your house, covering your ears with a pillow and yelling curse words as you try to sleep. Even if you told your landlord about it, they shrug off your complaint and smile like a saint, so there's no use speaking up about it. That's when the night of the back streets comes into play. First off, you block the entrance to that shithead's house before they return. Anything works. You could weld the door, use wooden planks, padlock the door, or whatever. Ensure that they can't enter their own house by any means and go back to your home. Sometime later, they'll come back to find that the door to their house has been sealed shut. They'll struggle with the door before giving up. And they'll make a serious face as though they're trying to think of who could have done this ridiculous prank to them. Once they realize that it couldn't possibly have been anyone else's doing but yours, it'll be too late. Because you'll be behind them, bashing their head in with a brick or some heavy object. Killing them right now would obviously break the rules, so you drag them to your house and enjoy a quiet rest. When the clock hits 3am, you drag the little shit outside and throw it in the middle of a relatively large street. You return to your home before it's too late and watch the scene from the window. The time is 3.13 a.m. Sweepers crawl out of the dark and sweep the streets clean, collecting all the trash, including that noise pollutant. Oh my gosh. Man, that's some real psychopath stuff, huh? Now for Valerie. The back streets are our main stage of activity at night. When night falls, our world unfolds. Regular intervals, we start marching from the perimeter of a nest and sweep everything as we move forward. Even if someone stands in our way and attacks us. Even if a powerful fixer kills a sweeper next to us who was our family, we pay no heed and continue onward. Like a wave of water, we sweep everything in our way, except for those who are strong enough to resist it. From an edge of a nest to the opposite end, we march without break for 80 minutes until the night in the back streets ends. So they're like, super efficient cleaners. So here's Anton. Our body is composed of liquid. Liquid is the substance that fills our body. While humans maintain their form with a the shell they call flesh and skin, we maintain our form with the suit we wear. If this liquid runs out, we will stop dead in place. Therefore, the liquid must always be filled is the reason we die. This liquid is what constitutes and moves our body, but we also use the liquid to sweep the streets and dine. The method is simple. When we embed a hook connected to the fuel tank on our backs into a human, they melt like a liquid, and we consume that liquid to refuel. Without this shell, we would deform and spill on the ground like them. The liquid is patented with the approval of the head. You must change your body to become like us if you wish to join our family. Do not worry about side effects. Mother will give you all the assistance you need. Belle could safely become a family thanks to her. So I guess that kind of subtly implies that some people actually choose to be sweepers. It's kind of cool. Now for Lila. That is correct. We are conscious of the attention of people during the daytime. We practice caution. It would be a public nuisance to show up in broad daylight and cause a ruckus. And we have a set of rules that we abide to. Of course, if the head demands our service, we must assemble, day or night. Oh, and I believe there is a small misunderstanding between us. It is not by the will of us sweepers that the night in the back streets has become a time when no deed is forbidden. Does it appear to you that every denizen of the back streets disapproves of the rules? Anyone is allowed to commit terrible acts at night, and there is nowhere to complain to if you are victimized. While well, this means terrible things can happen to you at night, it also means that you are free to be the perpetrator of such a deed yourself. 
fact, we do not see much benefit from the freedom of the nighttime other than being allowed to dine all we want. Now, what a crazy system. It's kind of like having the purge, but instead it's every day at just this tiny window of time at night. And the city is something else. I wonder what else has in store for us in the next one, which I will see you then. Peace.